Hey, Rem, how are you? Good, how are you? It's been a while. It's been a long time. How long has it been? Six months? Eight months? Oh, man, I, I don't know. I don't think it's been eight months, but... Okay. It's it's probably been about five or six, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'd have to go back on the archive and see. No doubt. Me too. Well, it's like, what, uh, it's about six o'clock there? It's earlier? Yep. It's earlier. Yeah, two hours. Okay, okay. So you were probably just trying to throw together a little food, right, or something like that? Not not quite yet. Um, you haven't even eaten my yet. My partner is uh, having a ladies' night, so I'm not really allowed in the house right now. I mean, I could I could probably be in there and, and like get some food or something, but I'm at my studio right now. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I almost hear like a plane in the background, like a humming sound. Well, there is an. I am outside for the moment. There is an airplane. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. But it's not very loud. No, but I can hear it. That's really interesting. Well, maybe it's the Bose headphones. Well, I got some little cheapies on now. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Well, I've I've got the Bose the Bose in right now. Okay, man. Maybe that's what it is. That's really interesting. Well, I was hmm. blown away by this little bit of information that you uh, put together from the uh, might of uh, not the might of thoughts but the the way to live so do you want to kind of start out there or sure now um you guys are still meeting in colorado right like once a month or something yeah uh every month uh we have a meeting um for the last maybe four or five months it's been every third saturday of the month but um Every it's pretty much generally the the second Saturday of the month. Okay. Um, and it's just it's just basic group discussion on on topics from the way to live at the moment. We've been we've been kind of studying this book for maybe the year the last year or two, probably two years. I mean, I don't know. There's so much in it. We just we we kind of like read through a few of the verses and the the conversation just spirals out through like sometimes even just one verse do you uh, just go step by step incrementally through the book Is that yeah okay yeah we we've we kind of started at the beginning and then now we're up to mm, i think page 344 okay okay but now are you also going through what they call the the what do they call it, the Geysis Slayer? No, because um, that's that's not that's that's for the individual person to study on their own. Okay, and uh, not everybody in our group is uh, has subscribed to that. Okay, yeah. Now you have to be like a passive member of Figu to do that, right? You know, I don't know if you have to be a passive member to subscribe to the Geysis Lair. Okay. But it you might it I might be wrong. I mean it would make sense that you would need to be a passive member, but I'm not I'm not sure. Okay. I I was just kind of wondering about that. Yeah, cuz you're not a, you're not a passive member, are you? No, you know, I'm um I, and I've been thinking about that more and whether or not I should take the plunge or not. <laughs> well, and you know it's not it's not really necessary it's just it's up to you and whether you feel like you want to do that or not you know of course do you feel obligated i mean you you're supposed to go to switzerland once a year right you don't have to um but it, you know it's encouraged because you get to then meet people and and uh experience what it's like to be at the center and uh yeah, I mean, if you go during the passive member meeting, which is every May, like at the end of the month, mm -hmm. um, then you get to meet people from all over the world who are involved in FIGU and study the material and uh, try to live in line with with uh, the writing and you know all that all that stuff, which is which is really just uh, the you know the laws of nature and living with reality and. And uh, and trying to be like a true human being, and trying to be like connected and grounded to reality. That's like b the basis of the whole thing, you know. Well, that's very interesting the way you put that. 
being connected to reality because I think the more I study this kind of thing uh, that seems to be very true yeah it's it like this what Billy writes and what we're studying what you talk about on your show and what only a few thousand people around the world study is what Billy writes called the teaching of truth, the teaching of spirit, the teaching of life. And the teaching is the teaching of truth. And, and what is truth? It's just, um, it, it's basically just what can be recognized in reality. You know, it's like the, it's, um, I think I've read it somewhere that it's like truth is certainty in recognition of reality. And it is just reality, and that's what we're dealt with. And so this is just kind of Billy's writings are just kind of clothing it in words, more or less. That's so, that's so interesting because that's the one thing I notice is that the more I study this material the more I do feel anchored and stable to reality. It's hard to put into words, but I do get that total sense. It is hard to put into words, and, and I find that it's it's good to... I try to mix it up as much as I can with like the way that I phrase things with... You know, because then it opens up new areas in your mind of like how you're perceiving reality and how you're perceiving truth instead of just getting stuck in the same like you know over and over again because um i mean the truth can also become a belief if you're not careful hmm. you know because if if you're if you're just kind of like uh going with the same thing over and over again in your head and not thinking about it from different angles then it becomes um any, I mean, any, any peop, anybody brings their own level of belief into anything, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure I do. You probably do. Sure. Uh, like, um, and I think I was thinking about this earlier today. Like, um, uh, where's my where's my train of thought here? It's like um, we were talking I think about truth when and I, being yeah, grounded. Yeah, yeah. But when I first, but when I first found out about this case, about Billy's case and the the uh, extraterrestrials and mm -hmm. and all of that, you know, I definitely brought my own level of belief into it. Um, even though I wasn't involved in religion ever that seriously, I definitely went to church when I was a kid, and and our whole society is steeped in, in belief oriented thinking. Yeah, and um, and you know, I found out about the case and about Billy's contacts and it didn't take too long for me to be able to um, see that it was uh, there was something to it mm -hmm. but um, you know like when I hear about Simyazi and and like Quetzal and Pata and all these all these people that Billy meets with um, I guess he doesn't really meet with Simyazi anymore right. uh, but uh Nonetheless, you know, I had like this, I, I had just imaginations of like, you know, almost maybe like borderline delusions or hallucinations, who knows, you know, because it's like, how, how do you um, synthesize this and assimilate it to uh, the reality that we are living in every day? It's a pretty big leap, you know, so, but the more I have studied the case the more i've read the contact notes and what billy has written um that are not contact notes like the spiritual teaching and the different books um the more i i i try to see it as it really is and it seems to me like if you were to meet one of these extraterrestrials it it would just be like i mean you've read you've read the contact notes a pretty decent amount right mark right. oh yeah yeah so like have you you've seen them like Patas or Billy asks Patas something like uh, what what's your take on this as a as a you know as a neuroscientist and as a brain researcher and as a psych as a psychologist I see all these 
I see these extraterrestrial people as just just really normal people who just benefit from a long lifespan and and it would be like if you were to go um you can't really do this but if you were to meet somebody who is a fireman you know like the you know like a respectable fireman you know who who is really just trying to do good and save save lives but the fireman is also a phd physicist yeah and then the uh but but not only that but he's also had the time to um gain a doctorate in in botany or something you know yeah. and then and he's also a policeman i, I kind of see the play Aaron as like sort of like galactic policeman you know like the good type of police not the corrupt police but like you know it's like all these different all these different professions that they have like like ultra sub nano uh tech I, I forget who you know they're talking about some of those guys that have some of these um some of those extraterrestrial guys you know that have like degree not degrees but they're experts in like subatomic particle physics and nano particle physics and nano computers and like ultra nano computers and and uh they had just they're just normal people but they have longer lifespans and yeah. more knowledge yeah if you had a if you had a thousand year lifespan imagine what you would learn and i guess they don't have to sleep as much as we do either so then it's almost like my goodness it's almost like even longer than that you know because i mean if we had a if we live 80 years or so um but we only had to sleep uh how long do they have to sleep like two hours a a night or something or like or something i then your lifespan is like all of a sudden it's not a normal 80 year old lifespan it's like you're getting two-thirds or of the day instead of half the day or three quarters of the day to be able to utilize. And plus they don't twiddle their time away by like doing frivolous things. They're pretty much working all the time. There is a section in the mind of thoughts that says the feelings transmit themselves to the psyche. And it's said in the context of, if you I got I got kind of off off topic there with the of the talk of the extraterrestrials I guess <laughs> no, no, no 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 it was fine um, <clears throat> but you were talking you were talking it made me think when you were describing these extraterrestrials about the ter- how much our thoughts impact us and still in so many ways that we were not even aware of. But there was a very interesting passage, and this is what happens to me when I study this stuff. Like, <clears throat> sometimes I'll read something, and like, man, I, I have to memorize that. I have to know it word for word, and I'm going to repeat it all the time. And then there's something else that happens where I'll read something, and the words don't quite fit together in a way that I can memorize or, or that I even w- want to. But a concept will keep coming up and percolating to the top over and over and over again. And I'll keep going back and thinking about this and meditating on this. And what it was saying was, <clears throat> you know how the, the feelings come out of the thoughts, right? Yep. And But it was also saying that when the feelings, uh, when the thoughts remain negative, the feelings will become increasingly more negative transmit themselves into the psyche and at that point the psyche can become disturbed and sick so I'm not sure exactly why my mind is focused on that step by step thing but these these are the kinds of information the way the information in the material kind of works with me sometimes I don't know if it affects you that way or or what. It, it does. That um, the, lately, I've been trying to really control my thoughts, um, and one of the things that has helped me to do that, you know, con- in controlling my feelings, 
um, and trying to program my subconscious, one of my, one of the things that I've been doing is is listening. Or even just trying to get a beautiful song stuck into my head, even if I can't if I can't listen to it, um, because music has a huge has a huge effect on your psyche, and it's like a really gigantic might that you know if you if you have um, like heavy metal stuck in your head or something, okay. yeah, and. It can, even though you might feel like you're fine, you might also start noticing that you are doing destructive behavior. And I've, because I've noticed that about myself at least. I don't know if other people do, but I think that that everybody has a psyche, and different types of music affect us in different type of ways. Well, um, I even caught myself a few days ago uh, laying in bed. And I, I had, I have a cold, and, and this is when the cold first started, and I caught myself thinking, it was like this super subtle negative thought slash feeling, and it was really interesting because I would cough <laughs> right away. I would cough, and I was like laying there, and I'm so, and then I was like real aware of my feelings I said so okay I'm going to relax I'm going to relax I'm going to feel good I'm just going to relax and just feel really good and yeah. and, the, and the and the cough stopped so hmm. and it just literally stopped and I went to sleep but I I remembered that so there are these real subtle uh negativities that I sometimes think we're not kind of aware of and they can be more impactful than than we would know. So, like you said, the heavy metal music could have some, you know, thing that's somewhat subtle that some people wouldn't realize. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it was Kurt Cobain's uh, fifty. It would have been his fifty-second birthday on um, what was it? Like January twentieth. Um, and I painted a mural of him back in. Um, Two years ago, in 2017, it would have been his 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine and I painted, painted a mural in Denver of him for what would have been his 50th birthday as kind of a tribute to him. And, you know, I was listening to a lot of Nirvana at the time, just getting pumped up to do this painting. And, uh, and I remember around that time, I, was, I had a lot of uh, destructive behavior Oh, did you really? And yeah, wow. and that, and then, um, did and then you just anger, or what? What were you experiencing? Maybe some anger. Wow. You know, I was like drinking like a decent amount of alcohol, and uh, just I don't know. So wow. Now, and is this recently or? That was that was two years ago. Okay. Like uh, okay. And then and then just recently, like in January of this year, when it was his birthday again, I uh, I posted that painting online of the uh the mural as like you know from as i was like oh this is right around the time we did that mural i'm gonna repost it and uh and then i tried to listen to some nirvana just just because like out of tradition or something i guess i don't know mm -hmm. and then i just i couldn't really listen to it for too long i had to i could feel my i could feel my psyche becoming into turmoil could you and so i was like oh man i gotta i gotta put on some Brahms or Bach or some yeah, piano or something to you, like you know counter I, this. You know what I've been doing lately? <laughs> if you take some of those heavy metal songs and you just take the chords and the melody yeah, um, and take all of the heavy metal sounds out of them, they all, there's sometimes really beautiful music in there. Yeah, sometimes they're they are like actually like those guys do know what they're doing musically. Yeah, I mean there are two um, Metallica songs that I've learned on my classical guitar. One of them is um, uh, "Nothing Else Matters" and, and and what's the other one? It's called um, oh shoot, I'm I'm losing it right now. <clears throat> uh, "Nothing Else Matters" and "The Unforgiven." Hmm. And there's these be they're beautiful, but you have to like reinterpret them because you're right they on the surface you have the heavy metal guitar sound and then you have the 
the sometimes the yelling and the screaming of the vocals but sometimes if you can you know just settle it down to the chord changes and the melody it can be very beautiful i mean anything that's if it affects your feelings as being angry i think it's probably not good right um at least at least not good for for too long of a time right and then there's then there's other there's other music that is angry i mean for the right reasons sometimes you know what i mean like I, oh, like yeah. like tool you ever listen to tool uh you'll have to send me some links okay um i was i was big into them for a, a little while and uh i'll i'll revisit their stuff every every so often but like you know like some of their a lot of their uh lyrics and and music has got some you know pretty deep insights and uh have you ever heard of um black sabbath i think the song is called war pigs yeah i've heard it but i don't remember it it's Gen been a long time talk about lyrics uh, here i'll just read a few of them generals gathered in their masses just like witches at black masses evil minds that plot destruction saucers of death construction in the fields the bodies burning as the war machine keeps turning Death and hatred to mankind, poisoning their brainwashed minds. It's uh, there's uh, some poetry there. Of course, it's super heavy metal. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, it's crazy. But I mean, and it's interesting because for some reason I have this fascination with World War II, and I feel like we're moving into an age much like World War II just the time before World War II, where that's the sense I'm getting with the tremendous political upheaval right now. Have you had any of those kinds of feelings? Um, maybe, maybe a little bit, but okay. I, I don't really know. I don't really know too much about the, uh, um, I'm fascinated by World War II as well. I, every once in a while I'll watch some, I'll watch, a documentary on Hitler or like a doc, like some TV series, like a man in the high castle was kind of interesting, even though it's, I think it's fiction, but, um, there's, uh, I don't know that. I don't know. I'm fascinated by it, but I don't know too much about like the, um, the events leading up to world war two enough to be able to compare it to like what we're going through right now. Uh huh. Well, let me, I, I've got to find it in my notes. It'll just take me a second here. But I, for whatever reason, have been drawn back to Adolf Hitler again because it was very interesting because the play are in. Uh, well, let me just read a little bit of this and then maybe we can discuss it. But I really want to focus on the stuff you sent me. Uh, it really made a uh, tremendous impact on me. But let me read it. Okay. Um, sure. This, this, is, this is about Hitler. And, okay. And let me continue here. It says, this was very strictly con controlled and monitored, but ul ultimately, all efforts here in vain. And he was unable to fulfill his task in the way that it was provided. Through the leaders of the Thule Society at that time, as well as through the clairvoyant, clairvoyant Hanneson One, the Giza intelligences succeeded in taking possession of Adolf Hitler's being and in misusing him for their dark and malicious purposes without him being able to defend himself against them. For a delusion-related lust for power began to flare up in him. Now, before I continue on this, let me go back to the top here a little bit. This will help make more sense. This is in Contact Report 260. Adolf Hitler was... In many respects, a genius. His knowledge ranged from a variety of areas of art and technology concerning a variety of sciences up to the use of the power of suggestion. In his internal form, he was an incarnate life form of very good values. Nevertheless, he wasn't a man of highly developed spirit, but rather a man of intellect and reason who was destined to lead the overall earthly politics and economy as well as all nations in a certain positive direction. 
in order to create a peaceful, united world and earth humanity. For this purpose, he was educated and incarnated at his place. He was destined to give a new style to the earth through a positive and enforced nonviolence and to initiate new forms of development. So, this is what was supposed to happen. That's what the play Arn wanted to happen. They, they impulsed this guy to be a world leader, and he was supposed to help bring peace to the earth. Uh, let me read it right here quickly, uh, and then uh, we'll continue. Yeah. At this time, Semyase wasn't allowed to say more. She explained, but maybe it is different today, such that I might learn something more from you. You once said before that Adolf Hitler also had, or just would have had, the task of creating a united Earth world. Now, we don't think of Hitler like that, do we? No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of people believe that that Hitler was like the devil incarnate. Absolutely. Like he was always evil, even from birth. And we know that that's not true. Right. Um, I mean, um, and you know, it's interesting. Uh, you said the word destined twice in there. It was, you read it off and mm-hmm. it was, uh, I think a lot of people think of destiny as like, you know, that's something that you're, you're destined to do from from be from when you're young. That's what that's the track that you're going to take with no. Uh, you can't do anything about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like you really got to screw it up to, you know. Or I mean, but what does that mean? I think, it, at least according to the teaching, you're you're always creating your own destiny. Mm-hmm. So it makes me think that. Uh, he was cre- he was creating his own destiny and wanting to gain power so that he could maybe turn the world into a better place, and maybe that's what he did. Why why he um, chose to enter politics and become a powerful person, but then we also know from the information that that Billy has given us uh, that he's written down. That he was influenced by the Thule Society, right? And what was that guy's name? Uh, Arthur Herman Steinschneider, Her- who yeah, was, who was called at the time Eric J- Jan Hannesen. Uh, it was some alias for whatever reason. Huh? Yeah. It's so very interesting. Yeah. So, um, I mean, hmm. maybe you know, since he was he was very suggestible to other people. Maybe he was also very, uh, suggestible, uh, by other people. I mean, does that make, does that make sense? Is that, is that possible? I wonder if that's, um, I think, I think part of this, what happened here, this, the Thule society, uh, was influenced by the Giza intelligences and you've heard of them, right? I mean, you know, yeah, of course. And the Giza intelligences influenced the Thule society the Thule Society influenced Hermann Steinschneider. The Thule Society wanted world domination. They wanted to take over the world. And eventually, this Hermann Steinschneider influenced Hitler enough where his thoughts slowly, slowly started to change this way. Now listen to this. You'll find this interesting. Uh, <clears throat> it's talking about Adolf and Steinschneider. It says... Thus both were Austrians. What is to be said further in relation to your question is that Adolf Hitler had already been instructed by our forces through telepathic impulses in his earliest youth in terms of his determinations and guidelines and indeed on an ongoing basis at every place where he always stayed. Thus he was also under constant control. At the same time, he learned a lot and everything started off well until he went to Vienna to enjoy an artistic education, at which he then failed, however. And from that point on, he rapidly fell more and more toward the negative and evil. Consequently, he fell outside of our control and our telepathic impulses. Attempts remained fruitless. So, I mean, the play Aaron were trying to impulse this guy and influence him 
to be a world leader. He had great potential for good, evidently. Well, that was when they when they impulse people. Um, the people don't know that the impulses are happening, you know, right. and so they um, maybe maybe he was also. I, I always I've wondered about this, like whether he's got he had also impulses from his own storage banks. I mean, can you get bad impulses from your oh, storage yeah. banks? Absolutely. I think I, I think you can, oh, and yes, then you can. <laughs> so I mean. He could have been getting some bad impulses from his storage banks, but um, it. I. I think. I'm not sure, but I think that um, suggestions from people in everyday real interactions, like that, seem more concrete to the average person. They they might override impulses, and that that you might get through your consciousness. I mean, I don't know if Hitler was any kind of a meditator or anything like that but I if know. that guy yeah but are you, I don't know. are you hearing any movement i'm hearing i've been hearing like a scratching kind of thing no is it is it your microphone it, or something it's probably it's probably my microphone rubbing up against my sweatshirt i'll pull it away from there okay. so maybe maybe that that's probably it that's probably but, uh, what it was yeah but uh Actually, it's better already. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just I just took it away. Yeah, I, I was I was kind of thinking about that, wondering if that was doing anything. You know, it's but, um, uh, there's anyway, for whatever reason, I don't know why. I've been thinking a lot about World War II. Been watching a lot of World War II movies. Uh, I you know Billy says we're headed for a civil war. I hope this. I hope we're gonna get through this, and it's not gonna happen. But uh, just some interesting thoughts. Yeah. Um, and 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 history is has so much information in it, especially the history in the Meyer case. Yeah, there's there's an entire world of information. <laughs> it's like an entire world view, you know. Absolutely, a whole frame of reference. So you want to start on page two forty six in the. Um, the way to live yeah yeah um if you have it handy you can read it i've got it right here yeah i mean it says uh it's number 356 it says it can never be stressed enough that the truth of the creational laws and recommendations as well as the recognition and fulfillment of them to the best of one's ability and capacity is of the greatest importance in order to have an honest and fair mode of life and leading of life in the context of the evolution driven by strivingness from that, it also follows that the learning and following of the teaching of the truth is of immense significance and that the teaching of the truth and the recognizing and fulfilling of the creational laws and recommendations is, in every case and without doubt, always above the personality of a teacher of the truth. Therefore, in four truths it is said, one, real rely on the truth of the creational laws and recommendations and not on the personality of a human being. Consequently, a human being ought not to ever rely on the personality of a teacher, rather solely on the teacher's message, and indeed only when it corresponds to the truth in truly form. Can you elaborate on that? What does, uh, it, what does it mean to rely on the personality of a teacher? So it means it's, it's I think... To me, it kind of means like not turning the teacher into a cult figure, oh. and and not turning to the uh, you know making the person out any more than they he or she really is. Well, it's like uh, you know I really liked Miss Szymanski as a math teacher when I was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. She was a great she was a great teacher, mm -hmm. um, and I enjoyed being in her class. Um, and uh, I, I liked being around her, but she wasn't the reason why I took that class. It was so I could learn math, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. and the math is what stuck with me. And so occasionally I might re remember her as as a nice teacher. But what's helped me more was the fact that I learned the math in her class that has helped me throughout my whole life. You know, Svath told. Billy 
that the people of the earth make idols for themselves. That's one of the things I remember that he said. They do. That we do. I mean, people do that all the time. It's all over the place. It's in. You know, they make people make idols out of religious figures. People make idols out of uh, Billy. Even yeah. um, people make people make idols out of uh, um, celebrities all the time. Of course, especially and, celebrities. And you know what I think is bad about that is when mm. they see that the person is really just a person and has some flaws, they attack the idol, the former idol. Sometimes, have you ever seen people do that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's of really, course, it's a strange thing. Well, those people, all, a, a lot of them, also crave attention, and they. A lot of people become famous because they wanted to become famous and they wanted to be somebody that other people – it's like the ego, ego thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, with Billy, he, he has like no ego. It's pretty, it's pretty cool to be around him because he's just so, so normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met him a few times and, you know, it's like the, the stuff that I've – and this this applies to this too because the stuff that I've learned from him is like, it's like so important, and it helped it's helped me so much in my life, ever since I found it and have started applying it, and uh, it's super cool to meet him. But um, but he you know he's not he himself is not the reason why I'm um, trying to implement. Uh, creational laws and recommendations into my life and you know he's not th- he's not the reason why I'm trying to uh, see reality for what it is and and trying to you know get rid of belief oriented thinking and and uh, be a be a better person trying to be more loving trying to you know have more empathy you know it's not because of him really it's just I mean, he wrote it, a lot of the stuff that I implemented into my life, but um, it's not for him. It's for myself, you know? Um, In Contact 228, it says something very interesting. It says, now if Nokodamian spirit form has a very high stage of evolution, then that doesn't mean that the human in which this spirit form is reincarnated would therefore be something other than a simple human. Now, I don't think exactly. of, I don't think of Billy as a simple human, but well, he kind of is. Rel- I some. think relative. I think it's like relatively speaking, you know, because he's sure. like his if his spirit form is like nine point six billion years old, right? Um, his his uh, consciousness level is definitely not going to be that at that level, but. At the same time, according to the information, his uh, he does have a very high level of consciousness. Um, but, but you to know, where he's he's I, like actually in his short lifetime, he's I think surpassed even Pata I know, in that's his amazing. Uh, in his uh, consciousness evolution. But, but, but it, it's like that's not as it's not as high as is nine point six billion years old. You know, there's. But you know, sometimes I see that simple guy from switzerland just kind of come through sometimes you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. say these super profound things that just stun you that you'll think about for a couple of years and then he says you know he kind of does something or says something that seems so down to earth and so uh, plain and, and and you're kind of sitting there going wow that what an interesting contrast and the same guy you know what I mean? It's yeah, nice. it's very, very, very different. But yeah, and, and so I mean, yeah, he he'll say like very profound things, and he writes very profound things. But he's definitely a normal normal guy. I mean, I was sitting in the kitchen with him. It was just me and him. We were waiting for somebody, and he's picking his hangnail on his thumb. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what and, I mean. That's and exactly I was like, what look, I, mean. <laughs> I was like looking over there, and I'm like. Shh. What the don't do that. What the <laughs> don't, hell are you doing, man? Like, don't do that. It's, you're going to make it worse, you know? And, like, of course, like, you know, he's, like, he, like, flaps his hand a little bit, and he's, like, ah. And then, like, Ava comes in, and then she, she's, like, uh, 
you know, has the fingernail clippers to try to clip it off. And then she's like, Rem, will you do this? And I was like, uh, she's like, I don't like blood. And oh, really? she, I'm, yeah. And, and, and I was like, sure. I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll do it. And <laughs> Billy is just like, nah, ah, and then like, seriously, just kind of like rant, like walked away into the, into the back room. No <laughs> He's like, maybe, maybe like embarrassed or something. So I don't know. But funny, man. I mean, this is the same guy, you know, yeah, who's yeah. writing this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like, he's just a normal guy. <laughs> I know. How the heck is the same guy there? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> that is funny, man. See, how many times have you have you have you got to uh, meet with him like that? That's really amazing. I I like uh, kind of four times, but really like only two times. Um, it was like uh, the beginning of a trip in t- in 2012. I spent a while there, like two and a half weeks, mm-hmm. and then I t- uh, took a few weeks in touring around Europe, and then went back to the center um, for a few days before I headed back to the states, and then. Um, oh wait, no, actually three, three times. Cause there was that time, which was like twice in one trip to Europe. But then I went really quickly, um, after my father passed away in 2017, mm. I, I was already going to Europe with, uh, my girlfriend and her daughter. And I just decided that I'm going to, I'm going to fly to Zurich and, uh, go to the center for a few days and uh you know and then that was pretty short but then last last summer i went with like a number of people who are involved in figu they're all in their like late 20s to early 30s and so it was like me daniel cooper tim james derek or sheeler and sanyan um sanyan derek he's sanyan and tim live in ohio Maybe oh, I don't know. You, right? you could probably have a good chance of, of seeing those guys if you ever wanted oh, yeah. to like make that, that connection. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I'll have to get more information. Yeah, I think they live in the Cleveland area. but uh, That's a couple hours. Yeah. I could do it. And then, so, but that was, you know, a few, uh, a few days at least. Because we, sp- we spent a few days at the center. Um last summer and then uh we we took a little trip and went camping and stuff and then and then went back to the center afterwards does he like go into like his room and just kind of stay in there when people are all over the place like that uh the billy yeah nobody knows what he does i guess or where he goes or does he leave the center completely or do you he doesn't he doesn't really leave the center that much um I think he gets in the pass. He'll go like once, once a day, once every few days. Like get in the passenger seat of the car and drive with, uh, with you know Christian Franer or like Jacobus or who Ava. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what he does all the time because you know him and him and Ava have a have a daughter together oh, who has a yeah they she, who, Selena she, Selena has a pretty severe mental handicap oh is that and right physi- and, and physical handicap yeah so selena um has the, you know that's that's got to be quite a quite a bit of work to um take yeah. care of her um and i don't know what where she goes you know she mm. probably has different people that take care of her and mm. um but then billy's always he's always writing he's always thinking when i was there he his shoulder was was broken so he couldn't really write he how um, did that happen <laughs> he was uh let's see he he was driving in a car uh down the road um to go to the store or something and mm-hmm. he noticed this farmer who's a neighbor of his who was walking like a few cows i want to say they were like little cows that mm-hmm. were <laughs> that was on the side of the road and Billy wanted to, wanted to talk to him for a moment. And so he got out of the car and, and was talking to the guy and then something startled these cows and they were, they were like, um, next to each other held together by like a harness. 
Oh, wow. And they ran and they like ran right towards him. And I think the harness that was in between the two cows, like they went on either side of him and he got like, like wow. flipped, flipped down onto the ground and like shattered his shoulder. Oh, no. <clears throat> I never Excuse heard me. that story. I never never knew anything about that. Yeah, he's like, uh, it's an experience. <laughs> you know? So like he was, he said he'll he'll never be able to lift his arm up above uh, a certain height ever again. No, you know, kidding. like after you know, like uh, he his it's his only arm. Yeah, you know, his, that's, that's, that's what where I mean. he yeah. does all of his writing. But he can he can write now again. He can I still think still uh, right. Yeah. Okay. But for for a few weeks there, he wasn't able to write. Um, so he was just kind of hanging out and, you know, just kind of giving um, advice on what to do with how to clip these bushes over. He, he's like a master gardener, so he'll oh, seriously. Right? I mean, he's like knows all, so much about plants and like how to how to prune things and like where things go to plant them. And, um, the center itself is like a botanical garden. It's so beautiful. I it's, bet. And, uh, and, uh, I've seen some of Daniel Cooper's video of that area. Oh it's yeah. So beautiful. God. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, I got, I got to talk to him for like an hour at one point because he just, had just so much downtime it was awesome you know i don't think like i think that was probably kind of a rare opportunity because like he most of the time he's he's uh you know ruminating over something that's uh that's going on in his mind and what he wants to write and like uh working things out and um i mean i think he you know gets up around 10 a.m and and just kind of does things around the center maybe writes here and there and then like i think he he's a little bit of a night owl too so i think he'll go to bed at like midnight or or later huh um but i don't know i mean that's i'm not an expert i don't i haven't really been there you've only been there like four too much that's really great i mean it sounds like it was fruitful most of all your trips have been fruitful you know is that is that safe to say or yeah i mean every i would rather go there than pretty much anywhere else in the world because i just learn so much every time i go there even in small passing comments from from people it's like stuff that i can think about for forever it's amazing was it was it you that told me maybe it was in the last show we did i think it might have been you that um well they've got christian right and he's kind of in charge, but there's another guy that's in charge as well. Um, <coughs> help me out here. Jacobus? No, it isn't Jacobus, I don't think. Maybe um, maybe it wasn't you that told me this, but I remember. Um, maybe well, was I Sil- thought it was there you. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Silvano, um, but he died a few years ago, uh, which is you know, too bad because he, he did a lot there. Isn't there a young guy? That's Let's a head, see. like head of Figu right now. It's it's not well. There's uh, Andreas uh, Andreas Schubiger. He's like the president, but Is I mean he, they're all they're all they're all clearly equal over there. They're to, they're all like total equals. It's okay. It, there's like uh, there's no there's no hierarchy. There's no there's no hierarchy at all. They just treat each other so so like frankly and and normal, mm-hmm. and they have their they have their differences. Some of them, like, maybe it wasn't you. I thought it was you that that said he just focuses on the might of thoughts because he he only feels like he could, in one lifetime, actually really learn one book that Billy's written. Um, was that you? Well, I well, there was, I did say something like that. There was Patrick Cheneau over there, yeah, maybe he's also he's also a core group member, but I think I asked him when I was there like six and a half years ago, if, if, uh, if he'd read all of, all of his, all of Billy's books and he's, he's said, no, um, I don't think he necessarily said might have the thoughts, okay. but, uh, but he said he would rather take yeah, one like, book, just yeah. take, take one and just learn it, learn the material really well. Um, and Billy's stepson, uh, or foster son, or there's, 
Atlanta, um, Atlanta Bieri. I guess that would be sort of his stepson because Billy and his Atlanta's mom, Ava, are, are like in a partnership. Hmm. Um, but uh, Billy kind of raised Atlant, and Atlant wrote a really great um, piece about studying Billy's writings. And it kind of the gist of it is is yeah that you should um, study study the things really slowly and and it's also recommendable to have a dictionary on hand so that you can look up words and and see the various meanings of the words and of course to know the you know to know or at least learn the german or see what it means in the german if you don't know german well <clears throat> i know we're about out of time but when this oh, one really? passage yeah <laughs> oh my gosh in this one passage it said do not rely simply on the words of a teacher which are only supported by his or her personality, rather rely on the truthly sense of his or her words. And uh, this, the German word, I think it's pronounced as if it starts with a Z. Zin means sense, mind, meaning, significance, spirit. Yeah. And he that phrase, truthly sense, I'd never heard before. <coughs> and I believe... Va- is it Varheit? Varheit, yeah, the truth. Truth. Genuine truth. Trueness. To see. Yeah. yeah, that's like a uh, goblet of the truth is Kelk de Varheit. Ah. So, truth, Varheit is like one of those words that I really know in German. I'm not a German speaker yet, yeah, but yeah. like uh, that's like one of those. Varheit. Anyway. I'll have to. Re- Hold on to that word. Um, Truth. We should. We should. Con- I would like to continue this conversation more with the. Uh, that was uh, page two forty six, number three fifty six. Okay. And then page three fifty four, number four twenty one, and they both kind of. I mean, c- we can't really go over the hour, right? I oh, mean, right now we're just free form recording and i'll post it to uh blog talk we can but we like to keep it in an hour but <laughs> just because i mean we've we've gone over more we've gone over like really far over before maybe oh, we yeah. could go like just a few minutes sure, over but sure. not yeah. you know not like not like a really long time over yeah. but uh, let's just plow through this information because it's so good mm-hmm. um so uh, you just read number two, that, and then the number three is never rely on a provisional form of a teacher's explanation or meaning of a word or interpretation. Rather, heed and evaluate only the ultimate value of an expression, of an influence, of content, and of a term, or of a meaning and explanation. Mm-hmm. Um, One thing I did look up was the word provisional, mm-hmm. which means arranged or existing for the present possibly to be changed later yeah so that that shed a little light on it yeah that makes me think like you know don't don't take everything i say on the fly as gospel truth exactly you know like Mm -hmm. i might just say something offhand and don't hold on to it forever you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um Rather, heed and evaluate only the ultimate value of an expression of an influence. Okay. Um, Number four, never rely on your usual everyday consciousness, which as a rule only occupies itself with superficial things and is extremely connected to the personality. Rather, rely solely on the knowledge consciousness and wisdom consciousness, which correctly assesses and truthfully form. I've never heard him use those words like that. <clears throat> knowledge consciousness and wisdom consciousness. Neither have I. Okay, okay. That would be something to look into then there. Yeah. One of the and things when I was reading this that stuck out, you know, where he says doesn't don't get caught up on the personality of the teacher. And then I looked up at Figu Bulletin 38 about the personality. Let me read just a little bit of that because I know it's getting late. It says, the, radi- yeah. the radiating impression of the personality is the radiation factor 
which is also designated the aura, and it is this which can be observed by means of the sense of perception by other humans when they are sensitive enough, respectively, when they can consciously use the energies and powers of their pine pineal gland and thereby mm -hmm. consciously utilize these perceptions. The fact is that every human is surrounded by fine matter, a fine matter respectively, a fluidal electromagnetic field which contains the information of the personality. Therefore, the imprint respectively, the radiation of the personality, is also called the information field, none of which, however, has anything to do with esoteric nonsense, just as it has nothing to do with the alleged and deceitful mediums who falsely boast out of image seeing and profit greed and about their ability to see our auras. And this fluidal electromagnetic field also has an effect on the <coughs> fellow human and with sufficient sensi sensitivity it can be perceived and defined by him. So I guess there's a whole lot going on there with the personality but and we're not supposed to get distracted by it and I can see why we could. <laughs> well that what you read right there is it goes it just goes right with the last part of this uh this thing after those four truths or those four points or whatever mm -hmm. um because it says like uh like a truly wise teacher of the truthly truth certainly has an emanation which corresponds to his or her strong personality Oh. But which is always below the value of the teaching of the truth, as well as the recognizing, understanding, following, and fulfilling of it. Tell us the page of that again. That's 248. 248, okay. Um, however, this is about almost halfway down. It says, however, for the students, the radiance, at, or emanation, of the teacher's personality is nevertheless also important in the form that one gets to know the nature and structure of one's own personality, whereby one can find one's way back to one's real and true original nature and identity. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thereby, the, per the personality of the person who, teach who teaches, whether female or male, is always below the teaching of the truth. Consequently, he or she cannot be put in direct relationship with the teaching itself. And since that is the case, the teaching of the truth always comes to the fore and always ranks first as the most important factor. So, I'm going to highlight that. That's really awesome. That that whole radiance thing, that uh, the fine fluidal energies. Some, mm. Sometimes I think we pick up on that a lot more than we realize. Speculation. Yeah. Because, <laughs> hmm. you know, I don't know. I, I probably feel like I do anyway. At least... Yeah. Uh, listen to Billy speak. You know what's interesting? Remember that 2011 interview he did with Christian? Where they did the uh, English subtitles? Yeah, I could. I could never forget that. I uh, trans. I transcribed it into text. <laughs> oh, you did! Wow, that's. Uh, awesome. Well, I was going through the video and and uh, I remember I was on the bus. I was uh, going through the video step by step and just typing out the the words that were on the video and then uh -huh. put it into it into a text format and that's where that is but anyway um what were we gonna say about that well there are <laughs> i don't know how much of this will actually go through an electronic device but i mean i could not understand the german yet it felt like his mannerisms and his facial expression um, also was part of the communication, if that makes any sense. And then yeah. there was a power of to course. That. There was a power, a real power to that um, video. And some of the questions I really liked, and some of them I thought were like real simplistic, but his, <laughs> his answers were so profound <laughs> that even if the question was kind of basic, it was like, whoa, he got this dump of information anyway 
Well, you were talking about his his uh, his expressions and his um, like moving his hands yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and on page three fifty four in in this in this uh, way to live book, I was like going to go to four twenty one, but on number four twenty, the one before it, it says uh, the spontaneous freedom of the correct logical, understandable, and appropriate expression through speech and gesticulation, which is what you're talking about with him being very animated and he's talking, uh, very often requires years of grueling learning because this ability does not fall into the human being's lap. Rather, it must be it must be learnt through hard work and arduousness. Is that 421 you were saying? That was 420. 420, okay. okay. Yeah. Now, th- um, this book that if people are going to listen to this later, uh, we, we have pages, page numbers, but we also have these numbers. And there's a whole series of points. I don't know how many there are. There must be about 500 or something well, like let's, that. Well, let's go to the end. Yeah, there's 500. Yep. Do you know any of the story behind that? Why did he organize the book like this? I, I have no idea. I don't know. It's just kind of the way no it idea. worked out. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And some of them are really short, like one sentence, and some of them are like 50 pages long. Like that one on striving is like 50 pages. That's that one that starts around page 100 or something? Because I always go to page 102 is the one I always use in the show. But that, for some reason, you know where he explains that striving is related directly to your happiness. Yeah, so number it's number one fifty one, but it starts on starts on page ninety eight. Okay, and it goes to like, I mean, I don't even know how far it goes. It Does goes it really far. End? It's like, <laughs> like one one uh, forty one forty eight, I think. Yeah, but um, oh, by the way, <clears throat> you you always mention uh, might of the thoughts on this show. Uh huh. Um. And um, I think, can I make a suggestion? Sure. I think you should, uh, when, you, when you say the page number, I think you should make it clear to people that it is um, the, in the second edition. Okay, yes. Because in the first edition, the page numbers are all different because they, um, they they the figo australia only had a certain um amount of money to work with to go to press oh really um, and then so that they they had to they had to format it in such a way that it was the way that it turned out was kind of tight and so then when they when they then they got a big donation i think and then they they um they ran a second edition of it which is what you have mm-hmm. i have the first edition but okay. the second with the second edition they had a little bit more money to work with, so they um, they changed the spacing so that the book would open a little bit easier, and it, and it wasn't so um, oh. so like taxing or something to 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 like read it and to like because with the with the first edition you really had to like kind of force it open so you could see the inside of the page, um, and. Uh, I think it's. I think that that is. It's more like a normal book with the second one. It's like more, more natural. Um, but just uh, no. That's anyway, a very good point, and I've I've been burned by that a couple of times. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. There's like 22 pages difference or something like that. I don't know what it is. It probably gets more different as you get towards the back of the book, right? Yeah, that's very very possible. So, and you guys are always in the way to live. I mean, you've been in there for like a couple years. I think it's been, it, it must have, I don't know when we started, but I think we've probably been studying it for like two years. Now, do you guys all come to the study with whatever you want to talk about and then you just kind of go from there? Or is it more organized? Is it more formal? How does it work? Yeah, there's a little bit of organization to it. Um, it's, it's, um, we, you know, that we, we have a business meeting of the, of the you still there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Just, there was just a little scratch of something. That, okay. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, we have, we have like a business meeting at the beginning with like the, the passive members. 
Um, and it's just me and Carol and Bill. And then, and then we just, you know, discuss things that we have to discuss. Uh, if we're having any like info stands coming up or if, you know, like we want to do anything that I don't know, it's just, just whatever that would be in, as far as, uh, just purely internal group concerns. And then, um, that usually lasts about a half an hour and then our, and then our group meeting starts and, uh, it, that's, that goes until, I don't know, it goes from like noon until two thirty, four. I don't know, wow. three, you know, so f- a few hours, uh, and, um, sometimes we'll jump right into way to live. So a lot of times we'll spend a little while, like kind of just, talking about stuff that we've been dealing with and because that's also real life stuff that you can apply the spiritual teaching to, which is, you know, uh, and there's not really too many opportunities to talk to other people um, other than at like at our group, you know, to talk to other people uh, about our everyday stuff and then apply the spiritual teaching to it and bounce ideas off of each other. So it's like a really great, a really great um, outlet for, you know, because that's just not possible with, like, most people that you are, the, the, that I know, you know? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, most people are not ready for this, this kind of stuff. And you can't, you can talk, you can talk about the uh, topics with people, like, without really saying, you, you can talk about what you've learned and, like, just the information that you've learned and you might not say like where you learned it or something, but I mean, talking about like having empathy and talking about, um, creating harmony in your environment is pretty universal. You don't have to like be, um, knowledgeable about Billy's writings or, or be involved in Figu to, to be able to relate to that. Do you feel like you've, you've grown in terms of your empathy sorry you cut out what did you say do you feel like you've you're you have more empathy now than you used to i do um and i but i don't think that i've i've uh, learned empathy as much from billy's material as i have from marshall rosenberg have you ever heard of marshall rosenberg no he um developed a technique called nonviolent communication really and i feel like it goes really closely with the spiritual teaching okay. um wow and i think police officers use that uh something similar when they you know when they have to um deal with somebody who's being totally unruly and they have to they have to like keep their calm you know not talking we have so much police brutality in our in our culture now and in the new in the news that it's hard to say police officer uh with and not think about it in that light but Mm -hmm. i'm talking about like you know the respectable police officers who will keep their cool in situations that are very tense and violent right and uh um this they i think they're mostly they're all trained in a similar thing Hmm. Nonviolent communication. Um, Marshall Rosenberg's method is just one way of doing it. But I think if you were to, um, I was wondering if it would. I, I forgot to ask Billy if he'd ever heard of Marshall Rosenberg. But I uh-huh. think that it, like, if you were to translate it into German, it would probably be like, uh, like violent in in German is usually translated as uh give out mm-hmm. and it would be like nicht nicht give out um and then i don't know what the word for communication is it might be even like communication but i don't th- i don't i don't think that's what it is it's probably it's probably something else but have you ever heard of the word gewalt some kite yeah i think you would say like give out some kite give out give, some kite what give, does that give mean out, give out some kite mm-hmm. well um maybe it's in the back of uh, I, don't, I don't i can't say off okay. off hand because i don't know it i don't have that one memorized okay but okay. um 
No, it's not in the it's not in the back of the way to live, but it it uh maybe it's in the back of the uh, Talmud Emmanuel. Some of these books have like got glossaries of mm-hmm. you know important words that you should should know. Um, no, it doesn't. You know, and a lot of times the Meyer definition is not the standard German definition. At least that's what I seem to come across sometimes. No, I I know he he really. Um, hashes out explanations for a lot of a lot of things like I mean he's even invented words too oh, a lot. Billy I think Billy that. has yeah like impulsation <laughs> um um so so huh. he invents a word in German and then they have to invent a word in English to translate it to I don't know if they invent a word if they here's here's the Gewalt some kite. I don't know if they invent a word in English either, mm-hmm. but Gewalt some kite is a noun and it says the state or quality of being with Gewalt. With, with Gewalt. And then and then a, and then a ne- another with violence. Yeah. Okay. Another bullet point is a deed or behavior that is Gewalt some. So Gewalt some is with Gewalt is an adjective. You know what I'm so, noticing more about German is very logical. Like you can yeah. kind of build words, right, by putting different things together. Y- yeah, and and you can you can sort of you can do that in English to some extent, but not bit. as not as yeah. well as in German. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, but since we're talking about Gewalt, might as well list off what that um, definition is, since since we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, Gewalt is uh, the brutal execution of elemental might and force, but it is but far above all might and all force. Gewalt exists in different and relative forms, one example being if Gewaltige Gesinnung, which is an expression from the character, personality, thoughts, feelings, and emotions that shows the inclination to act with Gewalt. Hmm. And an uh, explanation from Bata, Gewalt has nothing to do with the terms heftig, which is violent and heftigkeit violence because the old Lyrianian term with regard to Givat means Givila and it is defined as using with all the coercive means that are at one's disposal physical, psychical, mental and consciousness based powers, abilities and skills in order to carry out and carry through terrible actions and deeds so Maybe that'd be like the SS, you know. That, you know that that would be. So th- <clears throat> these were the Lyrians, right? I mean, this word came from a Lyrian word. Is that true? Uh, it says uh, because the old Lyrian term with regard to Givalt means Givila. I don't know if Givalt came from Lyrian, but maybe there's some some similarities. I know that German, German and Lyrian language are very similar. Like they have the same amount of characters in German is the like Lyrian apparently was spoken on earth like uh, something like 389,000 years ago yeah. and and it was in, and um, I think German um, was just kind of a mutation of the old Lyrian uh, language I have this feeling something. that these those guys had a real dark side too I know they probably they probably <laughs> did, you know. I get a feeling of them too much. <laughs> I just have this feeling. That's like you know the U- United States, like Americans, like Americans. We have dark sides, yeah. but there's also like really great people here too in this country. That's, but that's true. That's very very true. You know, I was thinking also earlier when we were talking about the extraterrestrials at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Uh, that it's almost like uh, you can't really think about them as extraterrestrials. You just think of them as foreigners. Huh. They just happen to, happen to be from a, another world. Right. But it's um, extraterrestrial seems sounds like really um, I don't know. There's there's like a lot of uh, subconscious kind of 
associations that come along with that term. Hmm. And it's like, uh, maybe just cause it's, it's more almost, it, it seems almost, I mean, yeah, extraterrestrial is like the, uh, practical definition of what they are because they are uh, non-terrestrial people Mm -hmm. but like really they're also foreigners you know and when we think of a foreigner Mm -hmm. all of a sudden it could be just a person from europe or like somebody from australia or something you know sure um so very interesting very interesting man we've been going for quite some time here Um, We gotta try. To, let's try to do this once a month or something. I'd Maybe. love to do that. I mean, it's se- it's seeming to me like a, like it would be practical for me to be able to do it midweek like this because I feel like I'm so busy all the time on the weekends. Like, yeah. I mean, my uh, my schedule has just just gone crazy. Um, kind kind of in some ways it has, but in some ways it's been. It's been a lot more relaxed, but because uh, I was doing murals with uh, with uh, some guys, and I'm not really doing murals with the same group of guys anymore. And um, I've been more concentrating on my own art. I'm an artist. I don't know if you know that, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. As that's my my like profession, how I yeah make the bread and butter. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's and really uh, yeah, so in the past, like. In the past, like a uh, few months, I've just been like, just painting like crazy, just like trying to doing a lot of trying murals? to, no, painting like these. I do these, um, I do these small paintings in Altoid tins. Uh, go to my website; it's just remingtonrobinson.com. Okay, and you see what I'm talking about? Like I, I, um, I try to do one a day. Um. I don't always do that, but sometimes I do two a day. But uh, it's uh, I just it's just in the last few months I've gotten a lot of a lot of traction on social media, like on Instagram. I've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of big accounts reposting my artwork, and my follower count has just gone up and up and up, and and I've been getting more business, and so I've just been busy. <laughs> you so know, you sell them online. I do. Now, do you do these like little? Um, <clears throat> I see these little silver. They look like a, like a little box. Yeah, like you know the Altoids mints. Oh, like, I'm not. I'm not even familiar with that. No. You've been like to the grocery store, like in, <coughs> excuse me, like in the checkout line, or like at a gas station. You can buy like Altoids peppermint mints. Donna's probably aware of all this stuff. I'm not aware of all this stuff. Is that your wife? Yeah. Yes, is um, I don't know. It's just a little like aluminum tin. So this that is, is a good idea. And then I, and then I, and I, I, I wish I could take credit for the idea. I mean, I, I, uh, I saw somebody else doing it, so I just started doing it too. I, I thought about. I actually did consider it as an idea, just like as <clears throat> maybe like. 10 years ago or something, but I didn't think it was practical. Like, you know how you're talking about like ideas versus ideals. Oh yeah. Well, this was just an idea that I had had <laughs> and I had never, I had never like made it into an ideal. I didn't take it very far enough to like think about all the ins and outs of it. And I just kind of, it was an idea. And then I just kind of thought it was maybe not a great idea. So, I, but then I saw somebody else doing it and I was like, Oh, that is kind of a good idea. <laughs> so, um, and then I, it's this, this girl who lives in Denver. I actually met up with her and painted with her once. And she, her name is Heidi Annalise. She, um, she's got a huge social media following with her paintings that are similar. And I met up with her, painted with her. And she, uh, I asked her if I could start doing this. I was like, do you mind if I, if I start doing the same thing? That looks pretty fun. She's like, oh, go ahead. I didn't come up with the idea, so don't know where it came from, but it's just, that's just like a lot of things. Like, you know, a lot of, you see somebody else doing it and you do it too, and then that's somebody good. else does that's, it. That's really great. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your paintings. They're like miniatures. 
yeah, they're all miniatures. Each each thing is on a little panel of of wood, like a little piece of piece of birch plywood, and it's two inches by three inches that that's I velcro small. into the. That's, yeah, that's got to be hard to paint. I'm the yeah, Larry. <laughs> My goodness, it's it's not so bad because I have small brushes and I can brace my hand up against the uh, side of the container to get it get to get it steady huh. to get the brush steady and then the the palette of paint is just right down in there in the bottom of the tin and I sell them just as is like I, I fix a little wood block to the back of it so that the lid is propped open for display at a and at the right angle, um, like you see them in there in the picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I do those two two different sizes. I do the Altoid normal boxes, and then I do the Altoid smalls boxes, which have a a really small panel in there, which is like an inch and a half by an inch or something. I see one here where you just have like a dish and then a glass, and it looks like tea or something in the glass. Yeah, that one actually, um, I, so I wrote a paper about the meaning of life and then I made it into little booklets that we give away at our info stand. And, uh, I, that was one of, one of those booklets about the meaning of life right there that I painted into the scene with the, the teapot. Huh. When do you guys do your info stands? Is we um it's not as regular anymore because we we used to do that we did them for like let's see 2000 uh 15 16 17 we did them for at least 3 years um here in Boulder on the Pearl Street Mall uh like once a month uh, just during the warmer months of the year mm-hmm. like i don't know um May through September or October, mm-hmm. and uh, but you know it's like that wasn't very productive. We got we got one member um, who found us through that. Okay, he looked us up on the, on our website and he he found our stand, um, and we had and so he was coming to our group meetings for a while, and then he moved to Ohio. Actually, really, yeah. How ironic. Did you lose touch with him? Um, I don't really talk to him, but I think Carol still talks to him occasionally. Um, but, huh. Yeah. And then, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, other than that, like we'd have some interesting conversations here and there, but mostly it was like a lot of work for not, and not much return. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I think people are kind of on this outdoor mall here just to kind of like be entertained and like go to, go to shops and and see pretty things like pe- like we had these paperweights that were like that carol has that are like the shape of like one of them that looks like a big jewel it's just like but it's just a piece of glass uh-huh. and uh pe- people just like come up to the stand and look at ooh, pretty and then they just like and then just keep going you know they so it was just kind of a, i think a lot of work to do that and not much return, but we, we do info stands. We still do them every once in a while. If there is like a, um, like a psychic fair or like a new age festival or something. Um, sometimes we can, we can get, I think, I think there might be one coming up, but I'm not sure when it is. I think we'll probably talk about it at the next meeting. Actually, I can't be at the next meeting cause I'm going to be in Mexico. I'm hmm. I'm I'm looking at your tremendous painting, this gigantic mural of a trout. Oh yeah, that that's, is impressive. Uh, thanks. <laughs> that's very impressive. That's here in Boulder. If you're ever in Boulder, um, you can see it in person. Wow, <laughs> that is quite uh, stunning. Thanks, man. So, um, uh, do you ever do you do them that big often, or? I mean that's huge. I've done lots of. I've done probably worked on fifty murals oh, at least fifty in in the Denver area. But that is kind of like one of the only ones that's like a hundred percent mine. The one the the with the trout. Uh huh. Now, what do you mean? It's 
the other ones aren't yours or well uh the other ones you know i worked on it with other people and oh, like it was a group uh thing. yeah huh well yeah. i'd like to see the finished product i this looks like it's about halfway done on your website right yeah it's, that's on the about page i think yeah 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 um i still haven't uploaded a page featuring murals only i need to do that oh you should these murals yeah. are impressive as hell gosh yeah i gotta i gotta get in there that's the biggest trout i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, that could eat a person <laughs> it's like yeah you, seriously it's like 15 feet i think the wall is maybe 15 by 20 My feet goodness, i want to say that's very very cool I, I wanted to I wanted to ask you one more thing. Is your so your wife uh, does she she doesn't study the this material does no, she? She is very very normal. She's very down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So so I'll throw a little thing out here and there, but I you know I don't push it on her at all. So that's good. Yeah. Does she does she, does she know that you're you're doing this show? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But she's kind of just non non interfering. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, man, I better go. It's it's quite late. I've had a great time, and we've covered a lot of very interesting material. Maybe, uh, let me see, it's March. Maybe we could do another one in April. Yeah, I'd like to do that we, okay. uh, if we can. We'll do. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to hang up, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot, Ren. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. Sounds good. Bye.